Apparently, Alyssa Milano, a leader of the Women's March, is disavowing and saying she will not speak due to bigotry and anti-Semitism. And what's really fascinating about this story, the headline from The Advocate, why Me Too activist Alyssa Milano will not speak at next Women's March. It says the actress advocate opens up about how the movement can learn from its critics and criticize the Women's March stances on anti-Semitism. What's interesting about this, and this is from October 30th, okay, is that Laura Loomer, who previously at Project Veritas, confronted Alyssa Milano at Politicon and asked whether or not she would disavow Linda Sarsour for supporting Sharia law. And they bring this up, and Alyssa Milano says, oh, that's not true, she doesn't, but thank you for your question. Before we get into the story and talk about her disavowing, she calls out Sarsour specifically about anti-Semitism, so maybe, maybe she actually Googled this after she was told. Well, here's Snopes. Snopes ran this article January of 2017. Women's March organizer Linda Sarsour accused of being anti-Semitic affiliated with Ham Hamas. In this story, okay, they highlight she was accused of promoting Sharia law. And that's what Laura Loomer asked Alyssa Milano. I'm not going to say whether she does or doesn't. I'm just going to show you Snopes highlighting several tweets. They say Sarsour was also accused of romanticizing Sharia law and hinting at it taking over America, whereby she would have interest-free loans. Those claims appeared to stem from tweets in which she stated that as a Muslim, she abides by Sharia law, and in which, depending upon one's point of view, she either advocated that legal system in the U.S. or lamented the poor understanding of its meaning and application. She said, I don't drink alcohol, don't eat pork, I follow Islamic way of living, that's all Sharia law is. If only my fellow liberals understood what Sharia law actually is, shaking my head. She says, Sharia law is misunderstood and has been pushed as some evil Muslim agenda. Some Muslims are oppressors for sure. If you are still paying interest, then Sharia law hasn't taken over. Just saying. You'll know it when you're living under Sharia law if suddenly all your loans and credit cards become interest-free. Sounds nice, doesn't it? No, when you consider that all schools of Sharia law regard women as lesser than men. She said, we are, wor we are worried about Sharia law taking over the country. Hobby Lobby ruling shows there's something more to fear and Islam isn't it. So I think it's fair to say that she's not necessarily promoting, potentially you could say she's advocating for it. I mean, she's saying you don't understand it and you know, some of it could be good. But I'm not a scholar. I did some light research, and my understanding is that there's four different schools. It's not all the same in, in every um, Muslim country. But for the most part, they all do regard women as less than men. So I think there's a lot to be criticized over Sharia law. Let me just point out the counter to Sharia law. Okay, Sharia law is Islamic law. Well, Christian law is called Mosaic law, and it is almost as bad. I mean, these are rules from the Bronze Age. We don't want to be following these things. So you can act like it's really nice. Whether or not you think that's advocacy, you take that opinion. I'm just pointing out what Snopes said. But let's read, with Alyssa, what Alyssa Mono, Mo, let's read what Alyssa Milano had to say about this. They say, at every chance she gets, the actress and activist honors Taranka Burke, the civil rights activist from the Bronx who coined the phrase that changed gender politics forever. But Milano, the unstoppable advocate whose tweet, if you've been sexually harassed and assaulted, write Me Too as a reply to this tweet, redefined viral and relaunched the movement. And she plans to do it again. I don't look at anything as backlash, she tells the advocate fresh off of her tireless fight against confirmation of accused sexual abuser Brett Kavanaugh, now mostly denied uh, accusations, which, which was even noted on Saturday Night Live. She's not a smidge exhausted or defeated. In fact, she's speaking this Thursday at the Rap Power Women's Summit, where 1,000 of the most influential women in entertainment, media, tech, sports, and entrepreneurship will gather to inspire and empower one another. Every time... Criticisms arrive against the movement. I look at that as an opportunity to discuss it, she says. Criticism of it is easy to find. The president and, re the president and a Republican-led Congress are increasingly attempting to portray Me Too not as an effort to empower the survivors of sexual misconduct across all genders, but as an attack on men. There is an admitted predator in the White House, while accused ones sit in the Supreme Court. Yes, accusations mostly now we know to be false, and some without credibility. Countless think pieces claim the movement has gone too far. Even one of its original leaders, Asia Argento, was accused of misconduct leading to additional fallout. Come on! Seriously. There's no movement that's perfect, she explains. I think that most powerful change in conversation comes out of criticism, and I look at things not as setbacks. This month, she made headlines regarding a confrontation with her own critics. While discussing how Time's Up is moving by moving the conversation further on a panel at Politicon, Los Angeles political, oh, the LA political event, she was confronted by Laura Loomer, a far-right reporter and conspiracy theorist who has been long entangled with Project Veritas. Now, I gotta say, I don't know how they use the, how they come up with these de definitions. I, I, I would say, I guess, maybe I don't know enough about Laura to call her a conspiracy theorist. I know she worked with Veritas, so I wouldn't 
necessarily lean in that direction. And far right, I'm not even sure what far right means. To me, I, I'm, I'm, my understanding is she's just kind of like a general conservative, but she's kind of high energy, to say the least. She's certainly been involved in many, I don't know what you'd call them, scandals, kind of, where she's been mocked and ridiculed on social media for like her tire getting punctured and pointing out some is Islamic women. For sure, for sure, not like she's perfect. But she did confront Alyssa Milano and said, my question is for you, Alyssa Milano. You are friends with Linda Sarsour, and both of you ladies have positioned yourselves as speakers and representatives of the Me Too movement. Loomer asked Milano, referring to one of the co-founders of the wildly successful Women's March, who is also a Muslim rights activist. I want to ask you now, right now, to disavow Linda Sarsour because she is a supporter of Sharia law, and under Sharia law, women are oppressed, women are forced to wear a hijab. Loomer probed, my question is, will you please disavow her because she is advocating for Sharia law? She's not, Milano responded at the time. She's not, but thank you so much for your question. I don't even want to give that moment a second breath, Milano tells the advocate. Just the fact that Laura Loomer is being considered a journalist to me means that she's being given enough airtime. Really? But Loomer was on the hunt for more. After, a, after security ex escorted the increasingly disruptive reporter out, she took to the internet to call Milano a liar and a fraud. Milano, however, Milano is disavowing Sarsour but not because of the Islamophobic conspiracies Loomer would like readers to believe. Let me just stop there. The advocates call her a conspiracy theorist, and they say it's because of Islamophobic conspiracies, but Snopes points out several tweets from Linda Sarsour where she talks greatly about Sharia law. Could you imagine if someone went on Twitter and started talking about Mosaic law and how we should impose Leviticus because, well, I'm sorry, she didn't say impose, but what if someone went on Twitter and said, you really just don't understand Mosaic law. It, you'd be really happy living under it because there's no debt. There's no usury. Would that be good? No, Mosaic Law was really bad, and we want to get rid of these religious tenets. So, call our conspiracy theorist, fine. Whether or not someone wants to interpret these as support for Sharia law is entirely up to them, because even Snopes says, depending on your point of view, what did they say? Depending on one's point of view, she either advocated that legal system or was lamenting its poor understanding, which means a lot of people took this to be advocacy according to Snopes. Come on, advocate. So here's what they say. Any time, uh, so uh, Milano is fine. Sarsour conspiracies. Any time that there is, uh, any time that there is a bigotry, any bigotry or anti-Semitism in that respect, it needs to be called out and addressed. I'm disappointed in the leadership of Women's March that they haven't done it adequately. Milano says now referring to leaders of the Women's March who've refused to denounce Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan and Louis Farrakhan's anti-Semitic, homophobic, and transphobic statements. Women's March co-chair Tamika Mallory sat in the audience. While Farrakhan gave a hateful speech in March, to which he said, the, I'm not even going to read this. I refuse to read this. She also received a shout out from him and posted about the event on social media. Louis Farrakhan said extremely anti-Semitic things recently, and he's done so over and over again. He's even posted these things on Twitter, and Twitter said it's not hate speech, they won't ban him. Good on Alyssa Milano for calling these people out. Okay, much, much respect. I don't care if, if most, Alyssa Milano disagrees with me and I disagree with her. I care that people are willing to hold their own accountable. And this to me says Alyssa Milano has a lot of integrity. You might not think she's perfect, absolutely not. And I don't think she's perfect either, but she absolutely deserves the respect of standing up and pointing these things out because they need to be called out. Bravo, Alyssa Milano, I think this is fantastic. She, Linda Sarsour strongly defended Mallory against accusations of being complicit in bigotry. Quote, I don't think these people have our best interests at heart to make us better people or to disrupt misconceptions or anti-Semitism because trashing a strong black woman and holding her accountable for the words of a man is not the way to bring people together. She commented on Facebook referencing the Nation of Islam. What work are we willing to do and what are we... And are we willing to be open to the true nature, to the true idea that members of the Nation of Islam are not all anti-Semites? Are we cool with broad brushing the whole group? That was Linda Sarsour. The recent mass gun, gun event in which a man vocally targeted Jewish people on social media took the lives of 11 people at a synagogue, has, deeply, has deepened the wound of Farrakhan's remarks and the Women's March leader's refusal to condemn them. A week earlier, Farrakhan tweeted out a speech in which he mentioned, I am not anti-Semite. He, he, <laughs> Farrakhan said he referred to Jews as termites. I don't even want to read his quotes. Milano has noticed the silence from the Women's March regarding Farrakhan's hate-mongering and won't stand for it, nor will she speak at the next Women's March if it's still led by Sarsour or Mallory if asked to make an appearance. I would say no at this point. Unfortunate that none of them have come forward against him at this point or even given a really good reason why to support him, she says. Instead, she intends to devote her time to helping migrant children separated from their parents by immigration services. When I met politicians or have meetings with them, 
one question to launch our conversation, which is always, what is the one thing that keeps you up at night? And for me, the one thing that keeps me up at night are those children, she says. Don't forget about the children behind bars. So they, they, they go on to a little bit, but look at this. The Advocate, I'm not familiar with exactly what this, uh, the, the magazine or the outlet is, but I just want to say, listen, you might not like Alyssa Milano. You might not like the Women's March or whatever, but she is refusing to participate. She is saying that they won't call out bigotry. And this is exactly what the right has been saying. You need to call out Farrakhan and boom, Alyssa Milano does it. Bravo to Alyssa Milano. It's the right thing to do. People like Farrakhan are, are, are hateful, divisive, generally bad people, in my opinion. And when you have Linda Sarsour defending Tamika Mallory, who is in the audience, in the audience, listening to Farrakhan speak, and Linda Sarsour defending, Linda Sarsour is defending this woman having done this. I just, I just, it just reeks of double standard. So I think this is definitely a double standard, and I don't think Alyssa Milano is perfect. But when you see this, what I always say is, you, you ex like, listen, you forgive people, you listen to people, and if, even if you think Alyssa Milano still is doing a bad job overall, respect this and encourage them to do better because this was the right thing to do. So anyway, stick around. I've got one more video coming up in just a few minutes. You can comment, let me know what you think, but I'll see you then.